recording now. I see Wes is already connected as well. So, hi Wes. Hey, hey uh, Andrew, how are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, we have a few students already connected, so I guess we can get it started as well. I see JE as well, so I'm just going to do a short in introduction to everyone and uh, we'll get started. So, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Alejandro Ferrero, the Google DSC lead at Politecnico de Milano. And as always, I want to thank all the students that participate in these live events. Um, today we're hosting our third event of this blockchain week. And after two amazing events with Phantom and Avalanche, um, it's now the turn for Theta. So I would like to welcome Wes Levitt and J.E. Long from Theta Labs, who will be telling us more about this fantastic project and how they're revolutionizing the video streaming industry through the use of blockchain. So I'm just going to hand it over to them so they can get started with their presentation. And I'm uh, going to stop sharing my screen. And you guys should be all set now. Sounds good. Hey, nice. Thanks for attending, everyone. Glad to be here. Uh, and following up with some great projects here for Blockchain Week you've been hosting uh, and, and Polkadot following up. So we're really glad Theta could be a part of it. Um, and with that, yeah, get kicked off. Let me make sure a screen share is working. Um, okay, so is that coming through all right if you can see this cover page? All good. Okay. Great. All right, we'll get right into it. So um, uh, as Alejandro mentioned, we're here to talk to you about uh, Theta Network and the Theta blockchain. Um, so what that is, uh, or first just get a quick intro. My name is Wes Levitt. I'm head of strategy for Theta Labs. I cover uh, most of our business operations, marketing and communications for the company. Uh, I'm joined by my CTO, uh, our CTO, J.E. Long as well, uh, who will be presenting a, a tech demo in a little bit. But first, we'll go over a brief overview of what Theta Project is building, um, where we came from, what we're solving in the video delivery space, uh, and then uh, what's being built on Theta Blockchain today. So to start with uh, what Theta Network is, uh, it's the leading peer-to-peer -peer video delivery protocol powered by blockchain. Uh, so we'll discuss what Theta is, the value proposition of what Theta adds to the, your video delivery stack, uh and uh how companies are using that today so just to start what it is theta is a decentralized video delivery network that works with traditional cdns content delivery networks in a hybrid model to improve video streaming efficiency um, so in layman terms what that means is uh in your traditional cdn stack uh an akamai or aws a centralized uh a cdn delivers the videos you're watching from YouTube, for example, to, to your device you're watching on. ThetaWorks in, uh, does a similar job, but what it does is allow you to pull from uh, your peers nearby videos that are being watched. And so uh, when possible, it creates a more efficient network by allowing you to pull from local peers over uh, smaller distances rather than have to pull up from a CDN around the world. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer streaming protocol and blockchain. Uh, it uses WebRTC so that uh, any user can relay video streams to their local peers, uh, browser to browser, or with a downloadable Theta Edge Node client, which we'll talk uh, about a little more later. The Theta blockchain works together with this streaming protocol to reward and incentivize relayers. Uh, users are rewarded with Theta cryptocurrency for each video segment that they relay to one of their nearby peers. So you can think of it as uh, in some ways similar to peer-to-peer -peer, uh, algorithms that you're familiar with, like your BitTorrents and, and such in the past, but with an incentive layer that causes users to be consistent and uh, reliable relayers of video to other users in the area. So rather than just seeding to get what they want back or, or just out of altruism, you get a really robust edge network of users around the world who are making their devices available in order to, um, to uh, uh, power this network we're building. Uh, it, it's a very large industry. If you're, I know a lot of folks are not familiar with video streaming outside of just you watch a lot of videos, but um, you know the, back, the background of it, how these videos get delivered is enormous. Uh, it's about $20 billion today. And as uh, you're probably all familiar yourself, video content is overwhelmingly uh, the, 
the lion's share of content that's uh, being shared in the world today. It's about two thirds at this point uh, and growing every single year. So the costs of that continue to rise and uh, it's, it's prime time for a, a protocol like Theta that lets you share, uh, deliver these videos more efficiently as that continues to grow. Uh, the Theta blockchain itself is a new native blockchain. Uh, it's infrastructure. And what we mean by that is it's it's not a new video platform like a YouTube. It's it's the pipes behind it, so to speak. So um, a lot of people get confused and think Theta is, is a YouTube rival. That's not the case at all. It's, it's more efficient infrastructure for platforms like YouTube or Twitch or any others to use. Uh, the Theta blockchain is fully open source. Uh, and the model is uh, to, to work with many different platforms to use Theta Network to more efficiently deliver their video. So the, the incentives we talked about, you, you can think of it as a little bit like a, a sharing economy play. Just like with Airbnb, you have excess housing stock that gets uh, that's underutilized that you can increase that utilization and monetize it when it's empty or Uber being excess vehicles being used more on the road. With Theta, you're monetizing unused bandwidth on any device. So what that means is most of us pay for uh, unlimited connection or, or pay for a certain amount of upload bandwidth, but it's not being used. It's basically dormant. Um, by using the Theta network uh, to use some of that bandwidth to help relay some uh, videos to other users nearby, you're basically able to monetize that, uh, that bandwidth you've already paid for. Um, the benefit to the video platforms that use it is you can use reduce your uh, CDN costs by 50% or more. We'll talk a little bit about how that uh, we've done that for our own Theta TV platform and how that was actually the impetus for us creating this to begin with. Um, but the long and short of it is more efficient delivery means less burden on a video platform to have to deliver that video to their users. So they're beneficiaries of this as well. So the start of, uh, uh, of how we came up with the Theta Network goes back to 2016 when we launched uh, Theta TV, which is our first party video platform, uh, primarily focused in beginning in the VR space. Uh, and, and we hold several patents for rendering esports uh, uh, and other content in VR in real time. Um, and did this in conjunction with a lot of uh, high profile esports tournaments like DreamHack and Stream VR Video Live. All sounds great, except as a, a startup without uh, uh, you know, hundreds of millions in funding, we realized very quickly that CDN costs for VR content being streamed around the world, very expensive. Um, and so uh, around the time we were raising our Series A in 2017, which was led by W1 uh, while she was at uh, DHVC, uh, we started putting our heads together about how to solve this problem of delivering video to these pockets of users around the world um, it's extremely expensive to us as a video platform, but we know we have many dedicated users concurrently watching these streams. So the solution is rather than us sending thousands of redundant streams of the same video uh, or the same live stream to users in different cities, is that uh, a portion of them can get that from the CDN at our expense uh, and relay that to the other users nearby over this peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, and so once we built this out, integrated this in Theta TV for ourselves, uh, basically solved our own problem. Uh, and you know, the short answer is it works. It saves our CDN cost by 60, sometimes 70% per month, which is great for us uh, as a small platform. But pretty quickly you realize that there's a significantly bigger market opportunity for this technology to be exported to other video platforms that can use it. Um, and that was when we really started looking at this as a, a standalone network that should be open source and for anyone to use rather than simply uh, just closed source tech for us to benefit from in our video platform. So with that, we launched the Theta blockchain uh, in March of 2019. Uh, it's in place on Theta TV and several startup video platforms like Game Talk Talk. Uh, and uh, also is used in Samsung VR's website uh, and a few other Samsung uh, properties that we're in, in the works with working on now. Um, I could give a little bit more into what the Theta blockchain is itself and what it does. And um, the core of that is uh, uh, 
that is blockchain consensus algorithm, which is a new variant of Byzantine fault tolerance known as multi BFT, uh, pioneered by uh, our own J.E. Long here on the presentation with us. Um, the way that works is uh, up to 30 validator nodes uh, propose and produce new blocks. Uh, these are enterprises running validator nodes, which at the time is Sony Europe, Google Cloud, Samsung Ventures, Binance, Gumi Cryptos, and Blockchain Ventures out of London are running our enterprise validator nodes. Um, these produce new blocks while a second layer of uh, thousands of community run guardian nodes finalize those blocks at re regular intervals. About 35, or excuse me, 4,500 guardian nodes uh, all run by our community at this point that are all staking uh, at least 1,000 data tokens. So the combination of, of these two and this new blockchain consensus model lets us achieve a low block time, uh, quick, reliable consensus from our validator nodes, uh, but without sacrificing decentralization, because rather than the interior set of validator nodes uh, having full control of this network and in theory being able to collude, uh, if ever a validator or a set of validator nodes produce an invalid block either by honest mistake or by collusion, uh, the decentralized community run guardian nodes can reverse that block rather than finalize it. So we see this as a as the right compromise to to get the best performance, but without um, simply being a, a permissioned uh, a permission network just solely run by the the few validator nodes. Uh, between these enterprise nodes and our Guardian node network, more than 58% of Theta tokens are currently staked on Theta blockchain and participating in block production. Obviously, we'd like to push that even higher, but we're pretty happy that at least the majority is. Um, Theta Labs as an entity as well is, is about a little less than one third of that. So uh, we've deliberately been trying to expand the, the number of stakers, reduce our stake to make the network more and more decentralized um, and, and not make Theta Labs a dominant part of that, which has been successful so far. So I mentioned uh, there's uh, users on Theta TV or other video platforms when they log on browser to browser, um, that they're able to relay video through WebRTC just to any other user in the network. So say a bunch of us are all uh, in the same city and watching the same content on Theta TV or another site that's using the Theta blockchain. Um, without any download or uh, browser extension, just uh, browser to browser, you can relay videos to other users nearby and earn Theta cryptocurrency for doing so. Um, but pretty quickly, we found out that a lot of our dedicated community members wanted uh, basically a, a, a more direct uh, way that they could just share video on it, even if they're not watching a, a given video site. They just want to basically plug into the network and contribute their, their bandwidth and uh, help grow the network. So we released the Theta Edge Node client, which is a, a dedicated app that you can run on your computer and basically just act as a, a, a relay or for any content on Theta Network that's coming by that another user in your area needs. So that's grown uh, uh, really successfully over the last, especially over the last six months or so. Um, it was about two or 3,000 nodes in November, December. Um, the last five months or so, it's grown dramatically across the world. And we're now at about 30,000 worldwide on a given day with some variation as different users come on and offline. Uh, the node presence is particularly strong in U.S. and Europe, um, we like it because that's where a lot of our content partners are, but um, we're also making inroads into China and Southeast Asia as well. Um, recently had a Latin American creator event on Theta TV that added several hundred nodes in South America. So uh, we still think there's a lot of room to grow in here. A lot of it's just education and exposing more users to uh, what an edge node is, how they can run it, and what they benefit from that, and so on. Um, this part is really critical uh, because this edge network is, as, as we're trying to onboard video platforms around the world, and as the video platforms we're targeting get bigger and bigger, reliability of this peer-to-peer -peer network becomes really important to them. Uh, obviously, at the pinnacle, if you if you want to get um, Netflix or YouTube to watch it, they want to know that this is reliable uh, and that it's not going to be something that on a given day they get 
great uh, sharing on this peer-to-peer -peer network and a lot of the workflow gets taken off them on another day it doesn't. So having this edge network is sort of like our always on backbone to this network. Um, and even if there's only a few users on this platform when you share content, it's sort of like your, your reserve of users around the world that can be called upon to uh, relay video streams when the network demands it. So for enterprises, uh, I talked a little bit uh, or alluded to what the value proposition is, but just to, to put a finer point on it, uh, the core value of it, uh, First of all, is why we built paid to begin with to reduce your CDN cost by 50% or more. Um, you know, it's something that's worth uh, hundreds of thousands for us to uh, uh, Twitch. It may be uh, tens of millions. So pretty significant as a as a start as a reason to use uh, Theta Network. Um, but what we also found by implementing this ourselves, which wasn't fully expected is that once you allow users to participate in this peer-to-peer -peer network and earn theta currency for their their access bandwidth uh, it was a really powerful driver to increase viewing times and return visits to our platform so on theta tv that meant uh, the average viewing time of users increased by 50 percent uh, compared to other live streams while we were in a transition period and had sort of an a b test we could do between some that were theta powered and some that were not um they also come back a lot more often and uh as we're we're finding as we work with uh larger video platforms while saving cdn costs is great no one's ever going to complain about saving millions of dollars uh, at, at some level they're not competing to put this way saving 20 million dollars won't win you the streaming war with a competing platform it's a nice uh bonus but uh, it's really all just about market share and user acquisition and user retention. So it's actually a, a more important uh, um, point for, for larger platforms that they can drive more users to the platform and keep them on there longer with these, these token rewards. Um, whether it's the, the base currency in the Theta network, uh, Theta Fuel or T Fuel, or as we've been experimenting with in the last few months uh, with NFTs. Um, and that dovetails nicely with what we're seeing in the entertainment space where they're really starting to recognize the market value um, and, and or the, the value to their platform that they can get from NFTs um, where they can drive more and more users to that. Um, the last point is we talked a lot about video sharing and, and these relaying of streams, but there's another component that um, a lot of people may not be aware of, which is transcoding. And what that is, is basically if like, if I'm streaming this video to you guys, um, if you're going to lots of different devices and lots of different platforms, there's different uh, video formats, different resolutions that need to be uh, converted to from the first given video stream. And so that transcoding, that's also a, a very large business. It's $2 billion in 2020 alone. Um, and it's something that can be done on this decentralized network, just like video relaying. So because we have this 30,000 strong edge network in place um, and had a lot of demands from users that they, they want to contribute more. They want to find other ways to use their resources for the network. We added the ability for users running this edge node to also contribute their CPU and GPU compute power as well. So that transcodes for Theta TV and other platforms. Uh, we also have it plugged into Folding at Home, which is a nonprofit uh, out of Stanford that uses compute power uh, to, to solve issues in, in vaccine development and things like that. It's sort of a proof of concept of this is what, how powerful this is when we can take 30,000 users always on and point that compute, computing power at one single operation. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's very potent and so another sort of tool in the, the toolkit when we're working with Bay Enterprises and showing uh, the value of this 30,000 uh, edge note workers and, and growing that uh, it, there's a lot of work basically they can do. Uh, the edge node is kind of like a one-stop shop in our vision of data delivery, compute, any other services that uh, a, a device can produce that can be pointed to whatever the job at hand is from an enterprise. Um, so as an enterprise that wants to use this agent network, you can think of it as like they're tapping into a, 
a more dynamic pay-as-you-go sort of system to services because instead of signing uh, a lengthy or, or owner service level agreement with a cloud provider, you can tap into the Theta network as much as you want. Uh, if you just have a few jobs for it, you just pay a little bit in tokens to the users, the, the workers on this edge network, um, or it can scale up with your demands as you need to, but there's no contract. It's really just as much work as you'd like to, to put to the network. So kind of pulling out the other, our, our vision for Theta uh, for on the infrastructure side is basically, this is sort of, sort of a back, Phone for edge net, uh, an edge network, edge network of devices around the world, whether it's computers, phones, smart TVs, any other connected device, because um, at the end of the day, it, it, as long as it has enough processing power and, and RAM to, to run the edge node and process the data coming in, it can be pretty much agnostic to what it's doing. Um, you think about data, it's, we're starting very um, in what could be thought of as a very narrow niche in, in video delivery, but it's really just a set of uh, uh, logic for devices to communicate with each other about what data they need or what parts of data they need, and then uh, the payment rails that go along with it using data for microtransactions so that the different devices can compensate each other for the work they're doing on their network. But you can generalize that then, whether it's data delivery of iOS updates between devices or if it's a, a a game patch, you know, for, for uh, Fortnite puts out a game patch and 20 million users want the same game patch at the same time. There's no reason why the same peer-to-peer -peer logic can't help distribute that in a better way uh, once we start generalizing beyond just uh, video delivery. Um, 5G will probably uh, be a, uh, a good big tailwind on this because uh, as video definitions keep increasing and data every VR content becomes more popular, uh, it's just more and more demands and more reason to make a more efficient network to distribute this. And I touched a little bit on NFTs earlier, which is um, something that's gotten a lot of attention the last couple of months. As I'm sure if you, uh, those of you who follow blockchain have seen, it's really anything, only thing anyone wants to talk about. Um, and uh, we, we started experimenting with NFTs last summer uh, and launched some in uh, November of this year, uh, or November, November of last year. Uh, NFTs that are built natively on the Theta blockchain via smart contracts. Um, these NFTs, for those who aren't familiar, it's a non-fungible token. Um, and you, one definition of it is a, a crypto asset that's uniquely identifiable and can be distinguished from any other crypto asset. So, Easiest way to explain that is to compare that to BTC or ETH, which are in large part fungible in that one ETH equals one ETH. Of course, there's some cases where you can track a specific ETH and how it goes, but for the, for the most part, people treat um, one ETH or one Bitcoin as more or less equal to any other ETH or Bitcoin. And NFT is the opposite of that, where uh, a particular one that exists on chain is provably scarce there's only one of them, or maybe it's only a limited set of only five of them. Um, and that's clearly identifiable on chain that only that many exist and no more can ever be created. So that makes NFTs ideal for representing uh, scarce items like individual works of art or limited edition collectibles, uh, rare items in video games, uh, any anything that has a quality of scarcity and that you need to be <coughs> to be provably scarce. Uh, on Theta, late last year, we started creating NFTs on Theta blockchain to represent items on Theta TV so that the, the streamers that uh, in the middle of the live stream could offer to their fan bases and give them unique items that they may show as like a badge to show that they're dedicated to the streamer. Um, and we expanded that just last week in an announcement that we're collaborating with World Poker Tour together to launch uh, Theta Drop Dot com, which is going to be a brand new NFT marketplace uh, with entertainment partners coming on board, starting with WPT. Um, so that's going to be really exciting in a few weeks when that launches. Uh, fans can basically watch in real time as WPT tournaments are happening. And then as soon as a, a, a big hand gets done, they can bid on 
uh, the to own the hand that won the tournament from their favorite player, or or to bid on all time classic hands from the the legendary tournaments in WPT history. Uh, it's generating a lot of buzz in the poker community uh, and and beyond, and we think that's a poker, especially given the crossover with crypto and the fact that they're very familiar with um, uh, how, how crypto operates in NFTs. We think it's going to be a really exciting launch in a few weeks. Um, but what's you know, personally, even more exciting for me is outside of these specific uh, NFT applications like Theta TV or WPT is um, as we build out the tools for anyone to be able to build NFTs on the open source Theta blockchain and launch their own platforms or their own uh, items they can use in games. And so and so we have a walkthrough uh, demo that uh, J.E., our CTO, will be doing for us here. This is J.E. I'm the CTO of the Theta Labs. Today, I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can, in just a few minutes, turn your favorite image or animation into a NFT token on the Theta network. In particular, as you can see, I, can, we, I have a lovely Jeep animation here, which shows a, a generous Santa Claus who is busily giving out the TFU token uh, on, in, a, in a Christmas. So let's see how we can turn this image into a NFT token in just a short few steps. To create a, an NFT token, the first step is to prepare the source code for the uh, smart contract. So here we have this uh, example implementation of an NFT token on the Theta token GitHub. Looking at the source code, if you are a uh, Ethereum developer, you might find it very familiar because this is pretty much the uh, ERC721 standard on Ethereum. So uh, on, on the Theta blockchain, the virtual machine is fully compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. The solid source code there can be deployed on the Theta network without any modification. Uh, but of course, on the Theta network, we have a different name for a token standard. In particular, we have this uh, abbreviation TNT, which stands for Theta Network Token. So in our network, this TNT721 is corresponding to uh, ERC21 on Ethereum. Uh, scrolling towards the end of this uh, source file, we have this uh, simple contract called the cool NFT, which extends the uh, TNT721 contract. So it's very simple. It has a constructor, which takes in three parameters. The first is the name of the, the token. The second is symbol, and the third is URI, which will be the URL of the uh, image or animation this NFT token is going to point to. Coming into the, the constructor, the first line essentially will get the, the index of the, the, the token being minted. So we see this line here, the index is, uh, is set to the total supply so that uh, when the first time we deploy this contract, then this is century zero so that the, the index of, of the first token will be zero. And then the second line here basically um, mint this, uh, this NFT with index zero. And then of course, um, the first parameter here is, a, is, is the message sender, which is the wallet we use to deploy this contract. So that um, in the beginning, the NFT token will belong, will belong to the, uh, the, the deployer wallet. And in the third line, so uh, what we do here is that uh, we will set the uh, URI for this newly minted token so that this token is pointing to the image or animation that we want to set to. That we have the source code of the NFT, the next step will be to compile the source code using your, fav using your favorite compiler. So in our, in our demo, so we are going to use this uh, Remix compiler, which is an online compiler to do the job. So if you are a, a Ethereum developer, you're, you're probably very familiar with this, this tool. So just follow the usual step. So we uh, copy the source code over, right? And then save it here. And then uh, next we tap on the, the compiler tab and then to select the proper compiler version. So in, in our case will be 0 0.6.2. Let me do that. Okay. Uh, next, uh, the EVN version, we select compiler default. Of course, the language here is Solidity. 
And then we want actually want this to enable uh, optimization so that uh, it will generate a, a smaller bytecode so that it can save our gas costs. So uh, after we, we set this configuration, then we just tap on this uh, compile nft.so. And then now, now uh, just for a few seconds, then we have this uh, result here. So on this contract here, I have various different contracts that uh, is in this source file. And then here, because we want what we want to deploy is the cool NFT token. So that uh, let's select that uh, cool NFT contract here. Now that we have this uh, source code of the NFT token being compiled successfully, the next step is to to deploy that, actually deploy that on the Stata blockchain. To do that, uh, first we need to go to the Stata wallet. You can you can go there by simply typing in wallet dot onto your browser and then you'll be redirected to this page so where uh, you can uh, on, on the center on, on the top of this page then you see this data data wallet and then underneath it you can select different network right including the, the uh, mainnet and the testnet so in today's demo I'm going to show you how to actually minting the NFT token on the mainnet on this wallet page you can click here create wallet and then follow a few steps to uh, to, to create your web wallet uh, but since i already have a wallet i'll skip this step and go directly uh, into my wallet so to do that uh, i click on the choose key store file this this button so once i click it uh, it uh, i can select a key store file i generated previously and then i can uh, enter my uh, password to unlock this wallet. So uh, pretty quick. I enter my address, which have uh, uh, more than 900 data view, which is uh, more than enough for me to, to deploy this NFT token. To deploy a token, uh, we need to, you know, uh, scroll to this tab, uh, this contract tab, click on it. And then you can see that uh, Underneath this tab, we, we have these two sections. One that on the left is uh, you have this deploy contract, and then on the right uh, is interact with contract. So uh, so to deploy the NFT token, so uh, we will use this uh, deploy contract functionality. As you can see here, it requires two uh, two inputs. The first is the uh, ABI inter interface, and the second part is the uh, the bytecode, right? So so we can get those uh, from our uh, Remix compiler. So let's go back to the compiler. So uh, make sure here uh, after compilation, we are selecting the uh, cool NFT token. And then we can simply click here, click this button uh, to copy the uh, ABI, right? This value copy and go back to the wallet here and paste. And uh, we go back again uh, and click on uh, Michael. So this time it's got copied to the uh, clipboard. Uh, we come back to the wallet and then uh, paste it on the Michael. So remember the constructor of this cool NFT require uh, three inputs, right? The first is the name. So how, how about we just name it to be uh, TFU Santa, right? Uh, just simple TFS, I guess. Uh, and the URI, so this is the, the, uh, the exciting part, right? So we want to see our Santa cross animation being uh, turned into an NFT so that uh, we go back to our GIF tap here uh, now we can uh, copy over simply copy over the url here and then go back to the wallet and then paste it here and now here we go so we click on deploy contract it will ask us to enter the password for the wallet again and my i will enter my super secure password here and then click on confirm and deploy right probably need to wait for about um, 10 seconds so after which so just a little bit more. After which, you know, the, the uh, NFT token should have been deployed to the mainnet. So, so here we go. Uh, it says that a smart contract has been deployed. And then here is the contract address, right? And then also you can see that uh, the, in this wallet, it, it automatically switched to the second tab, which is interact with wallet, where I can actually already choose different functions of this uh, uh, TNT721 token, right, to interact with the uh, contract. But before that, uh, let's go to the Explorer and then inspect this, this contract. 
to inspect the contract, we simply first copy the contract address, and then we go to the uh, Theta Explorer. So on the Theta Explorer, so uh, we can paste in the uh, contract address, and then just simply click a, a search, right? So 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 then uh, redirect us to this uh, page for this contract, and as we can see. We already have the, uh, the 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 smart contract transaction that we we, we just executed, um, so uh, it, you can see that it is uh, from the uh, the 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 wallet I deploy the the contract and then it's to uh, zero zero because it's a contract uh, a deployment right, uh, and then you scroll down on this page then you can see there's a section where you can. Um, you know, uh, verify the code very similar to uh, what you can do on a ether scan. So let me, let me also go and demo that. So uh, going back to the uh, source code here, I just simply, you know, copy uh, the source code and then going back to the Explorer uh, and then paste it. So here I need to select the, uh, the proper version, which is 0 0.6.2, and then uh, optimization. Remember, we select uh, optimization, so we click on yes. And scroll down, uh, click here, verify and publish. Right, so that then it will start to uh, verify your source code. Uh, if you, uh, it, it, it passed the verification, now bang. So we have the uh, source code here, right, uh, being verified against the bytecode, right? So it is chosen here. And then, uh, in addition to that, it also you know um, display the uh, ABI contract and the uh, creation code uh, along with this argument. Right. So, uh, so, so, so we have the source code here. Then uh, we can proceed to uh, to read the smart contract, right? To inspect some of these its uh, parameters. So uh, remember, uh, we are uh, in the contract we deployed. We just generate one one NFT token, right? And the owner. Is my wallet so uh, I can come here uh, and copy my wallet address and then I want to see that um, what is the balance of my wallet right so click here so oh okay so it has one so which is consistent with uh, our expectation that uh, we have just one token there um, so that the name is scrolled down. Uh, the name is uh, TVO Santa. Is it what we said, right? When we create a token, and the symbol is uh, TFS. And then, okay. And interestingly, we 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 uh, have this token URI here. We can which we can query uh, directly on the Explorer. So the token ID. Remember the first line of code. We set the token ID to to zero, right? So then we type in zero here, and then we do a query, then then uh, like we, as we expected, right? Uh, the string here is exactly the uh, the URL we put in for for this G file. So now uh, here we go. We have successfully you know turn our uh, favorite uh, Santa Claus uh, into an NFT token on the Theta network. Next, uh, let's try to to do a transfer to transfer this token from uh, between two wallets. Uh, so to do that, we have to go back to the uh, Theta wallet. Uh, so we come back here. Uh, remember that uh, on this interact with the contract tab, we can uh, you know choose different function of the NFT token right to interact with the contract. So to do the transfer, then we simply choose this uh, transfer from. Okay. So for, for this function input, so we have three parameters right. The from address is the uh, the, the the current token holder and the two addresses, the address one to transfer to, and the token ID is the ID of the token that I want to perform this transfer. So from, of course, is because the owner, initial owner is this wallet, right? Who deploy the, uh, who deploy the, the, the contract, then I should copy paste the, the from address here. And for this two address, uh, I actually uh, was able to create another wallet beforehand. So I can put my wallet address there so that uh, it will be transferred between two of my wallets, right? And for token ID, remember that uh, the first token we generated has an ID zero, so it simply just put zero here. So we'll just do zero here, and then we click on write, right? Right. This one will uh, sign the transaction and actually bro propagate, uh, broadcast it to the Theta blockchain. 
So again, uh, we have to input our uh, you know super secure password here, and then just wait for about ten to twelve seconds for this this uh, transaction to be propagated and also be uh, confirmed onto the Theta network. So just hang on a little bit. Okay, so we're there. So so basically, uh, this transaction had been processed uh, on the Theta blockchain. So uh, let's go back to the, uh, the the smart contract on the Explorer. So and then we refresh the page, right? And then bang! Now we have this, the uh, the transaction that we just submitted to the to the blockchain, uh, which just happened a few seconds ago. So uh, we click on this transaction. Okay. So magic happens, right? We see that uh, this transaction is carrying an item, right? Which is the GIF. Uh, which we just turn into this NFT, right? This is a, the, the lovely Santa Cross GIF file. And then if you scroll down, right? So it has the detail. So we transfer from um, this, uh, our, my, my original wallet. And then this to this, this address, right? This two address is, is, is the, uh, the contract address. And then this has some uh, statistics, right? Like what's the gas limit? How much gas was actually used, right? And, and all that. And if you're a developer, then uh, you might be you might want to also look at this tab, uh, which is log. Uh, this just has all the log that has been emitted during this contract execution. So uh, we also decode all this log for developer to uh, to inspect this transaction. For example, the first log is the approval, right? And the second log is essentially a, a transfer. Okay, so so now now that this transfer uh, this transfer transaction has been executed then we can we can go back to explorer uh, the wallet uh, the the, uh, the smart contract page to see that whether this transfer was done successfully to verify the uh, whether the the transfer was completed successfully uh, we go back to the the contract page so we just click on the contract and then uh, like we did before we can click on this read contract tab right so going down here, uh, there's a few function that we, uh, which allows us to, to verify whether the transfer was done successfully. Uh, the first is the uh, balance off, right? So uh, so remember this this transfer was done between these two wallet. Uh, the firm was you know start with eight six eight, and the two was uh, starts with uh, nine one nine, right? So then uh, let's first verify that the current after transfer. This from uh, wallet doesn't have this token anymore. So we copy the address and paste here and then do the query. Okay, now it has zero uh, token as we as expected. Uh, next, let's check the, uh, the two address, right? We go back to the wallet and copy the address here and then let's paste it here and do a query. Okay, so as we expected, um, the, the, the result here is one. And then to, to, to give you uh, even um, uh, higher confidence, then we can go down here and then to check the owner of a certain token. So 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 now here we have this owner of right of a, any token that uh, you can put the token ID here and do the query. So remember that the first token we minted uh, has this ID zero, right? And then let's do a query. And now, oh, okay, so we it returns this zero uh, X nine one nine. So, which is the, the uh, just the other uh, two address here uh, we, we put in when we execute this this transaction. At this point, that we can conclude that you know the transfer was done successfully uh, between these two wallet, and our lovely sender right has been transferred from my original wallet to my other wallet. Hopefully, this demo gives you a concrete idea of how to mint an NFT token on the Theta blockchain and how to transfer it between two wallets. As you can see from the demo, minting and transferring an NFT token on the Theta blockchain is very fast, taking only about 10 seconds. And the, the, gas, the gas cost is pretty low, as you can see from the gas statistic here. More importantly, the Theta protocol is built from scratch on a proof-of-stake model, and therefore, it's significantly greener and more environmentally friendly compared to other platforms like Ethereum. In the future, 
Theta's distributed network of more than 30,000 edge nodes will support decentralized storage of the digital assets used by the NFT. This enables users to truly own and take custody of their NFTs and not depend on any centralized platform. Cross-chain bridge between Theta Network, Ethereum, and others will enable seamless NFT transfers and transactions across network. So users can take their NFTs with them anywhere they want to. Yeah, uh, I know Sorry, we're bumping yeah. up against our time, but I wanted to at least be able to get to a little bit of the Q&A. Um, uh, first one I, I noticed is uh, Rodolfo, which I, I think Jay uh, started to actually answer your question as part of his video, but um, to say that, yeah, we are looking at cross-chain bridges for NFT integration. We would like they to be the number one blockchain for NFTs. For and we think the real opportunity there is, first of all, from a technical standpoint, the points JE just mentioned about uh, speed and low gas cost and being more environmentally friendly, which um, I don't think is yet uh, really in the headspace of uh, the mind space of, of crypto folks. But as we talk to people outside of the crypto space, it's a very important point for important point for them when they see statistics on how much electricity is used when they when they back into the gas costs on ethereum and how much electricity is used for the proof of work for those blocks and then see how much that equals um you know we, we've talked to entertainment companies in los angeles that are really excited about the nft thing and we were shocked that that was one of the very first things they wanted to put to us is do we have an answer for that because it's not uh it's not feasible for them to launch something that has such a uh, a huge uh, environmental footprint like that. Um, so we were able to get them comfortable with the idea because as Jay mentioned, it's on proof of stake. Um, we think that combined with the fact that we're focused in the, in the video space, uh, which is a natural place for NFTs to sort of come out of, whether it's the streamers we have on our platform that want to launch their own NFTs, or whether it's uh, libraries and movie catalogs, which are ripe with, um, uh potentially uh nft uh scenes or or characters and that kind of thing um we think that is positioning there is, is a really obvious choice but as jay mentioned the, the bridge to ethereum is is necessary into other blockchains because it's probably not going to be winner take all so um yeah that, that cross-chain integration is going to be uh very important to so that it's not uh just data as an island of nfts versus other platforms um Another one, Jay, maybe you, oh, sorry, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Was that a more technical that one? I thought might be better suited for you. <laughs> so so in, uh, to add to that, so I also mentioned that uh, in the presentation that we also plan on to to, to, to have this uh, edge storage capability for edge nodes, which means then uh, when this is uh, become available, then people can actually store the, the digital asset of the NFT, right, on, on the edge node and distribute it uh, across the world. So this, this means that once you have the NFT, then no one can take it down, right? And, uh, it doesn't like, you know, storing your NFT asset in the AWS. And then whenever, you know, AWS doesn't allow that access of the uh, the, 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 uh, the, the digital asset, then they, they can do so. But let's say if you, you store it uh, in a decentralized uh, storage network, then you can really own your, your asset, right? You take custody of your asset. No one can take it down. And then you'll be live there for forever. So this is also another advantage. And then the big initiative we will, we will have uh, along with the uh, cost chain. Uh, uh, um, a project. Yeah. Uh, there was another question from that uh, Jay. I thought you might be able to add some good color on. He asked if there's any spatial restrictions for content delivery, meaning does physical distance between nodes have an impact as to whether some nodes get picked to stream bandwidth for for other peers or, or what are the factors? Yeah, that's that a great, great question. Uh, yeah. So. So, so uh, uh, in our uh, uh, protocol, you know, pairing two peers actually it, it takes multiple parameters into account. Right? Physical distance is one thing, but it's more importantly the uh, connectivity between these two nodes. Right? You might have a situation where, let's say, I'm in San Francisco, and then there's another uh, a peer in uh, in Seattle, right? There's like maybe a thousand kilometers apart, but maybe we are on the same uh, operating network, right? We are using all using Comcast. 
So there might be a good uh, connectivity between, between us so that uh, our uh, uh, backend algorithm will be able to pair this node together because there may be only like 50 millisecond uh, delay in between, right? So this is one thing we are looking in, looking at. And the other uh, important parameter is like, uh, what's, what is the uh, bandwidth limit, right, for each node? No. Maybe, uh, let's say, uh, my friend, he has a very high, uh, very, very good uh, uh, package from with the operator. So he might have like one gigabyte of uh, upload bandwidth, whereas I'm sitting poorly in this apartment and have like maybe like one megabyte upload, right? So, so with this kind of parameters, then maybe uh, our backend will be able to pair his node with maybe hundreds of different uh, nodes, while uh, I will be, um, in my case, I'll be respecting the upload limit um, uh, in, in, my, in my case, right? And also, uh, um, even more advanced uh, will be that uh, our backend algorithm will be uh, taking account into the, the history of each uh, of each node, so that uh, based on their um, uh, 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 kind of uh, sharing uh, uh, efficiency in the past, right? In the past, maybe an hour or so, then he can determine that which node will be able to serve uh, the other nodes, and then we'll be able to uh, pair that with uh, uh, as many nodes as possible. Yeah, hope that answers your question. We okay on time, Alejandro? Can Absolutely. we take another? There's, it was probably we have any, we have any, uh, deadline here? I see that there are plenty of questions. So there's a lot of interest on, you know, your, your feedback on this stuff. So if you have time, sure. yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, I can try to, we can try to go at least a little briefly on some so that we can touch as many questions as we can here. Uh, I saw a bunch of questions about the validator nodes and centralization. I can kind of throw out quick answers on that. And Jay, I know, I'm sure you have some thoughts there too. Um, about whether the consensus algorithm is too centralized because the validators may at different levels respond to the same authorities, often U.S. authorities. Uh, so is it possible some content gets censored uh, or not validated? Uh, yeah, at this stage, you could definitely make the argument there is it is somewhat U.S. centric. Uh, it's it's moving away from that somewhat with Sony Europe coming uh, last month. Gumi Ventures is out of. Um, Japan and Blockchain Ventures is a UK company, but that said, uh, you could still make the argument if there's if there's coordination between Western countries, for example, that's a, a factor. So uh, I, I would say that today, yeah, that probably is uh, too centralized still. Um, I think that goes along with Rodolfo's question about uh, if broader decentralization would come from a higher number number of validator nodes. I mean, it's a spectrum, really, decentralization. It's not a binary thing. So I think the answer is probably it's it's going the right direction, but it could get better, or it, it should it could be better. And it's we need to keep um, adding more nodes and thinking through these things. And eventually, when uh, you know a, a system's in place where it, it could just be done completely permissionlessly, then uh, the incentives are in place so that you don't see those concentrations where it's you know, like a single point of failure, whether it's regulatory or whether it's um, some type of misincentives for it. Oh yeah, I think that's a great question, a uh, great, great answer. So uh, like, like Wes mentioned, so we are on the road to decentralization, right? Uh, just imagine, I uh, just, just remember, when we, when we started the, the mainnet that uh, all data, data labs was controlling all the validators, but they quickly we are adding uh, more uh, enterprise validator to our uh, to, to our uh, back and so to our network so that uh, so currently we already have uh, different validators in different places of the world. But in the future, because we still have a lot of slots, right? So that uh, you can imagine that uh, maybe uh, in the future, in the end, then we'll have uh, maybe a more widespread uh, validator footprint in, 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 the, in the world so that there will, will be less, less possibility for any coordination and any collusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to Austin's question, uh, as far as the timeline for pursuing, there's not a, a strict one, but we'd like to see, you know, five to 10 more in the next, say, 18 months. It's a little bit uh, hard to predict timelines on it because, you know, we get a lot of inbound interest, many more than uh, there are validated roads about different groups that want to run it, but we're also trying to make sure it's ones that have a strategic value to the ecosystem, not just we have a lot of tokens and we want to be a node. Um, you know, obviously, if it's someone who has an interest in media, entertainment, uh, technology in general, and we could see why they'd have uh, a broader strategic reason to want to road, that that makes a lot more sense than someone like, let's say, uh, 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 a financial hedge fund 
that doesn't seem to have like a big a bigger reason or strategic reason to care about the crypto industry then that's not really someone we're interested in making about it no it just doesn't seem like they have the long-term interest in mind uh jay what do, you, what do you think about matthew's question uh if there's a critical number of edge node if there's a critical number of edge nodes you need to have a solid foundation for the network to run smoothly um yeah, it kind of depends on how you look at it, I suppose. Right. right. Uh, uh, that's a great question. Thanks for the question. So, uh, uh, I think similar to the validator thing, it's it's not a, a black and white, right? It's a it, it is it's a spectrum. So, let's say if you only have a few nodes in the world, then it may be not be able to deliver uh, anything. But currently, we have thirty thousand uh, edge nodes, right? And then we already see, uh, you know, any time uh, if you look at the edge node, there there are like more than hundred uh, of uh, uh, decentralized stream, right? Uh, concurrently on the edge network. And then a lot of them works pretty smoothly when, whenever I check it out on my, on my, on my, on my desktop. So uh, in the future, then, as we grow this number to, let's say, 100,000 or even beyond that, I will uh, I'll think that, uh, you know, the video stream can be delivered uh, more, uh, even more smoothly compared to today. But uh, I think um, uh, when it regards to the critical uh, number, I'll, I'll say that um, uh, it, it kind of depends on the viewership, right, where you have all your viewer and also the, uh, the, the distribution of the edge node. But I think even as of today, a lot of decentralized streams on the edge node can deliver pretty smoothly. And I think it, it will only get better in, in the future. Uh, another interesting one that uh, uh, Corey had asked about how we handle restrictions, how Theta handles restrictions that internet service providers a limit on the sharing of bandwidth. Um, so this is something we, we put a lot of time to because that's something that could be a, you know, at a macro level, really affect how Theta works, uh, whether it can work. And um, what we've seen so far is that it's not a, a huge issue. Uh, and we think the main reason for that is because it's not upload bandwidth itself that uh, uses uploading a lot that um, ISPs historically have had a problem with. It's, it's that it's copywritten content uh, that's being shared. Uh, and so because uh, yeah, data as infrastructure is is meant to be something that's plugged into the CDN stack to make video delivery more efficient. Um, it still works within the given the existing stack of whatever platform is hosting the content, but it doesn't actually have um, doesn't uh, host the content itself. So just to give an example, probably make more sense. Um, if you have a, a a site like Theta TV, or let's say it's a Twitch that uh, plugs in Theta as peer-to-peer -peer delivery, uh, there's no way for a user to, to tap into that or hijack it to share whatever content they want. They can only share it with other users of the video platform that integrated uh, Theta. So there's not a, it, it's not just a tool that anyone can use to, to share pirated content in. It's more like something like just another piece of technology like the CDN that uh, Twitch is using, for example. So, you know, we haven't uh, had a, a direct conflict with any speeds about that. We haven't had any users report that it was, um, but we, we don't see that as an issue because again, it's not it's not peer to peer or uploading itself that ISPs have had a problem with. They just don't want illegal content um, moving over their their servers or their their ISP. So, given that we're not building Theta to be uh, a, a the place where people share illegal content. Uh, we don't see a conflict so much there. Um, we have started to have some conversation with telcos uh, and many of them that run ISPs as well, though, because uh, we, we do think there is even an opportunity to work together with them there in the same way that ISPs fought uh, compression uh, because they saw it as less data moving through their pipes. There's less money for us to be made. But the reality is once compression got better, um, more data types and video content just became a bigger and bigger part of the internet and the ISPs shared in that benefit too. So we think it's kind of the same story. It seems like something that's um, harmful to ISPs until it, uh, if you just look at superficially, but if we work them to show how we're actually making the whole distribution of data online more efficient, um, we think they'll take a, a longer term view of it because it's in their benefit as well. We're not, we're not, uh, data isn't just stealing their business. It's something that's making it more efficient for everyone. Um, I could do a couple rapid fire ones too. I, I saw a few that, uh, uh, where to go that, uh, Theta, will there be an NFT marketplace, Samuel asked. And yes, besides these, 
WPT drop sites and things like that. There is a there will be an, um, a broader open beta market NFT marketplace. It's in the works as well, um, which we'll share updates on when we can, hopefully soon. Um, okay, I think it's uh, I did jump for in a little bit for another one, but hopefully answered uh, questions. But we can also share. Uh, I don't know if you already had it, but. Um, we can share our, our contact info for Theta as well. Or you know what, I can probably share my screen, throw it up. Um, for any questions we didn't get to, uh, to reach out to us, we're happy to, um, yeah, absolutely. to keep answering those. Just a moment. Have Actually, Wes, uh, we can't even share any resources that you think uh, would be interesting to our student community. We can um, share them in our Telegram group so they have access to them if they want to reach out to you. Um, and ask any other questions, or maybe they have um, any interest in, you know, participating in the Theta Network, as you mentioned, um, and all that great content that you presented. So if you want to share it uh, in the chat, feel free, and then we'll put together all these resources so they, they have them all in one place. Sure, I'll just do that to make that easier. I'll, I'll share with you after you can send around to the group as well as, uh, yeah, our GitHub that you shared earlier. And, and also our, our, our hackathon is ending uh, this week, so a little later, but we'll probably launch a new one uh, pretty soon, um, which typically around for about three months or so. So we'll love to see if anyone's interested, if they jump into the next hackathon, which we might kick off probably, probably early May. Uh, okay. We'll see. Uh, we, we have exams uh, around June, July, because here in Europe is a little bit different. <laughs> they conflict <laughs> with, uh, with our you yes. know, university schedule, but um, it still sounds really interesting, so we'll be looking forward um, from updates uh, to updates from from Theta and see how you know uh, mm -hmm. you guys keep pushing really great stuff out there. So um, this has been amazing for us. The same way that all the uh, all the blockchain events uh, we've organized, this was amazing. Um, really interesting things from the overview of Theta, uh, how you guys got here. The, <laughs> the technical bar with JE and the, the whole video. We'll try to modify it on our side so everything is clear, the audio, the, the video and everything. But yeah, thank you so much guys for your time, uh, for Good answering deal. all the questions and putting together this uh, this amazing presentation. I know that we had a few more questions, but uh, it, it, it's okay. Sure, yeah, yeah, thanks for hosting, Alondra, appreciate it. And thanks to everyone for joining your questions and um, we'll send around our about the info and, and uh, our discussion channels and uh, welcome you guys to come join us and, and uh, happy to answer any more questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for hosting the event and uh, I want to thank also the audience for, for your time or for participating in the event. Thank you so much everyone and thank you so much to all the students that join us live. Right. Until next time. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.